welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. A few weeks ago, I built this Mini ITX RK3588 based ARM PC, on which I initially installed Debian. And at the end of the video, I asked if you'd be interested in a comparison of this system with the N100 based Mini ITX PC I built towards the end of 2023. And lots of you said yes, you would be interested in such a comparison, and so here I am back with this computer, and we're going to pit it against the M100 system, with both computers running Ubuntu. So, let's go and get started. Right, here we have our two systems, the RK3588 one, which is based on a ROC5 ITX board, and the N100 system, which is based on an ASRock N100DC ITX motherboard. Both boards come with a pre-soldered processor, and on the ROC5 ITX, we also have pre-soldered memory, which here is 8GB. But on the ASRock board, we have one slot for a DDR4 DIMM, which here is fitted with an 8GB Corsair Vengeance module. And when I built these systems, the prices for the board, including processor and 8GB of RAM, were £96 or $119.90 versus £144.36 or $156.43. For this video, I've fitted both systems with a crucial P3 500GB NVMe SSD, which is PCIe Gen 3. And I've also disconnected any additional SATA drives in the system, there's one over here in this system, there's one underneath in this system, and I've disconnected these drives so they don't feature in our power consumption tests. Running through the full specifications, the RK3588 is octa-core with four ARM Cortex-A76 cores running at up to 2.4 GHz, and four A55 cores running at up to 1.8 GHz. And it also contains an Armali G610 MC4 GPU and a 6 tops MPU. Meanwhile, the N100 has four of Intel's 13th generation efficient or E cores clocked at up to 3.4 GHz, as well as Intel UHD graphics with 24 execution units. And as already noted, both systems have 8 GB of DDR4 RAM and a 500 GB. PCIe 3.0 NVMe SSD. On both boards, the latter is plugged into a two-lane PCIe 3.0 M.2 slot, with both systems also having a second M.2 slot for a wireless module. I won't detail all other specifications as I've done this in earlier videos, but key features of our RK3588 system are 4K and 8K HDMI outputs, an HDMI input, and four SATA ports. Meanwhile, our N100 contender offers VGA as well as HDMI output and has two SATA ports plus a four lane PCIe 3.0 slot. And so, overall, both systems have a lot of connectivity and certainly a great deal more than on the average mini PC. Aside from having very different processors, they're also in terms of other hardware, on the face of it, pretty evenly matched. So let's connect them up and compare their performance. Right, I've now got both computers up and running with the processor indicated on the desktop wallpaper so we can identify them. So here we're running Ubuntu 24.04 on our RK3588 system, and if I press this button, here we are running it on our N100 system. As we can see, the programs that are pre-installed and pinned to the dock do vary slightly. If I go back to the RK3588, we see we've got the Chromium browser at the top there. We've got Firefox here on the N100 system and also an app store is included. And the reason things are slightly different is that on the M100 system, I did a standard install by downloading an ISO file from the Ubuntu website. Whereas for our ARM system, I downloaded a custom image from the amazing Ubuntu Rock Chip project by Joshua Rake. And this provides an image of Ubuntu 2404 based on the Rock Chip 
ARM kernel and is a great choice if you want to run an optimized version of Ubuntu on an RK3588 ARM board like those from Radsa and Orange Pi. And all you have to do is to go down to the particular website here. There we are, you find your particular board here, the ROC5 ITX, and then lots of images are available. And here specifically, we're running Ubuntu 2404 with a pre-installed desktop. Now, I thought we'd begin with a boot test, and I know this is a bit controversial, as it does depend on the BIOS settings on the M100. But uh, everything is on the defaults here, so let's turn on the power. And here we go. Very exciting. Oh, the RK3588 is showing its hand first. But no, we have a cursor on the M100 as well, and ASRock on the screen. This is an amazingly interesting event, isn't it? This should have been in the Olympics. Maybe it will be there next time in Los Angeles. You never know. Anyway, Ubuntu is on the screen on one side, Ubuntu is on the screen on the other side. Which one's going to win? I think I know, yes. The RK3588 has won on 24.6 seconds compared to 27.2 seconds on the M100, which, to be honest, is pretty even. So let's move on to the next test. Greetings, here I am back again, and we're now going to run three tests here in the terminal. The first of which is going to be a CPU test, and before we run that we'll do an LS CPU, just to take a look at the CPU statistics, and we'll uh, scroll all the way back up to the top of that, where here we can see we're definitely on an RK3588 system. It has eight CPU cores. It doesn't tell us how many threads per core, but the answer to that is one, so we've got eight threads we can use in our test. So let's just uh, clear the screen like that and bring up a sysbench test. There we are, and this will factor prime numbers to a maximum of 20,000 with an events limit of 10,000, and it'll give us a time to run this test, with the best result being lowest. So let's run the test. Won't take very long. And uh, what do we get? 1.91 seconds. So let's go across to the uh, N100 system. And first of all, again, we'll do an LS CPU to have a look at the uh, CPU details and scroll back up. Here we can see definitely we're now on an x86-based system, which has got four cores and one thread per core. So uh, let's now clear the screen again, and once again, bring up Sysbench. And you'll note here, I have got four threads set rather than eight as we used on the M100. So let's run the test see what we get. 2.257. So the M100 loses to the RK3588, quite possibly because the RK3588 has got its eight cores. So let's uh, clear the screen, and we're now going to run a GPU test, which is going to be GL Mark II. And this is a fairly old test. Some people don't like this test very much, but it does run on both ARM and x86 systems, so we can use it here. And we'll also be testing the GPU in the browser a bit later in the video. And I should tell you that in this test, the high result is better. So let's uh, run the test and we'll move its output window, I think over here, if I can grab hold of it like that. And this will take a while to run, so we'll use the magic of filmmaking to speed on through. And here we are pausing to take a look at the Crystal Rabbit. It's the law to pause to take a look at the Crystal Rabbit. And oh, it's gone. So we'll now speed on through until the end of the test. And there we are. We have a score of 1401. And out of context, that is uh, pretty much meaningless. So let's go across to the N100, where we will uh, clear the screen and again run GL Mark II. And once again, we're pausing to say hello to the Crystal Rabbit. I hope you're all waving vigorously. And there we are. We have a final result of 1985, which is clearly higher than the result for the RK3588 at 14.01. So here, Intel has won in our first battle of on-chip graphics. And I think we'll now move on to our final test. So once again, I'm going to clear the screen. I'm going to do an LS BLK list block devices, where we can see all of the storage 
on the system because we're now going to test the speed of our NVMe SSD. And remember, on both systems, we have a crucial P3 500 gigabyte M.2 drive connected via a PCIe 3.0 two-lane interface. So let's bring up the HD parameters command to test the read speed of the drive. There we are, and we will execute. Here we go. Again, won't take very long. Here we want to have the higher result. And there we are, a speed of 1305 megabytes a second on our RK3588 based system. So once again, I'll press the magic button. Here we go, and we will clear the screen on the M100. We'll do an LS BLK here as well. And again, we can see all the storage on the system. And again, I'll bring up the HD parameters command. And we'll press enter. What are we going to get here? These I would have thought will be fairly similar, but you never know. 1273 megabytes a second. So just slightly slower, although not a lot in it, on the M100 compared to our RK3588. And let's amalgamate all of our results so far onto a comparison table where we can see that at this stage in the game, our RK3588 is coming out the winner. Guess who's back again? It's me. And we're now going to do one of my favorite tests, which is where we use the GNU image manipulation program, GIMP, to do a quick render test. So uh, let's do a file and new and uh, 1920 1080 as a default image. And we're going to go to uh, filters and render and we're going to do lava. And I've got this now set up on the RK3588 and over on the M100, exactly the same thing is set up as well like that. So let's now put both of these side by side and use the magic of filmmaking to start them at the same point in time. And away they go on the next way out wacky races. And oh look, the M100 has won already. 3.5 seconds compared to 8 seconds for the RK3588. And this is a real world test that has most certainly been won by the N100. Next, we're going to conduct another real world challenge which is rendering my standard edit test here in Caden Live. Both of our systems are perfectly capable of a bit of HD video editing. So let's go to project and to render. And I've created a script for my test edit. So we will start the script. And here, of course, we're looking for the lowest possible render time. So let's speed on through until the end of the render. And there we are, this RK3588 system has exported the video in 2 minutes and 42 seconds. So let's go across to the N100 where guess what? Everything is set up. So we'll just go to uh, render and uh, once again start the script. And for a second time, our N100 system scores a fantastic win. A great result for the Intel based PC. And if we once again amalgamate results on our comparison table, we can see that things have changed quite a bit. Now, it's time for some tests that are Spider-Man friendly. Yes, it's time for some web-based tests, which we're going to conduct in Chromium. And as you can see, I've first brought up Chromium's GPU internals, which show that here on the RK3588 system, we have got a decent amount of hardware acceleration. So let's go across to webbasemark.com, where we're going to run the Basemark Web3 test. So let's kick it off on our RK3588 system. And this is a test of web browser performance, including graphical performance, and it'll take a second to run. So once again, we'll put our pedal to the metal to accelerate time. And whilst things are speeding on, I'll let you know that in this test, the highest result is the best. And there we are. We have a score of 348.77 here on our RK3588 system. So let's go straight across to the M100 system where I've installed the Chromium browser so we have a fair test and where, as you would expect, things are all set up. 
Although we should take a look at the uh, GPU internals for Chromium, where we find exactly the same level of hardware acceleration. So let's go across and run the web based mark test. And there we are. Once again, the winner is the N100 system by a wide margin. This has surprised me, actually. I didn't think it would beat the RK3588 quite so significantly on so many tests, but this is certainly very good news for Intel and their N100. Right, here I am back again to test streaming media playback. Both the machines we're testing out here, the RK3588 and the M100. I know from previous videos they can both play 1080p footage, no problems at all. So I thought we'd do a 4K playback test here in YouTube. I've got a test clip of some ducks. We're seeing this in a 1080p video, but we are playing here 4K 3840x2160 footage. And there are a few drop frames just as things started out, but after that it's clearly settled and there are no problems playing 4K footage at all. And it's always nice to see some ducks in the video, and indeed some geese. So let's go across to the N100 system. Here we are, I've got the same test set up as you would expect, and again we will full screen that and set this playing. And there we are, it's going. And this is showing no drop frames whatsoever. Again, it's settled and, uh, well, it doesn't have to settle, does it? It's got no drop frames whatsoever, which is very good. We can see our ducks in 4K, no problems. So I think this test is clearly a draw. Both of these systems have no problems playing back our test 4K video. Right, for our final test, I've got a camera looking at a power meter connected to the system displayed on the bottom of the screen so we can monitor power use, which, as we can see, is about 10.2, 10.3 watts at idle for the RK3588. And this seems a bit high, but I suspect it's related to the efficiency or lack thereof of the ATX power supply in this particular RK3588 system. And I brought up the Sysbench command in the term, as you can see, I've adjusted it so when we run it, it'll keep running for some period of time, and it'll show us power use, at least with the CPU at load, which has gone up to about 14.1, 14.2 watts, which is pretty reasonable. That's pretty good for a system at load. So let's go across to the N100 system. Here we are, and here we can see our idle power use is about 11.1 watts, very slightly more, but not a lot. Oh, 11.2 it was then for a second, but uh, something like that. And again, we'll run the Sysbench command. What's this going to do? Where are we going to go? Oh, we are going significantly higher, about a 22.8, 22.9 watts. This is how it won on all the previous tests. It won by using more power. And I guess this is what we would have suspected, but it's great to see it being measured in our final test. And so there we are. We've come to the end of our tests and can take a look at our final results table. And in my view, both of these computers are winners as they both deliver an excellent Ubuntu 2404 experience, are very responsive with good 4K streaming and sufficient power for most basic computing applications. And so it's now time for the N100 system to return to my desk where it runs Linux Mint and for its RK3588 base friend to look forward to participating in more YouTube adventures. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon. Oh,